Good morning, everyone. And good afternoon for those of you joining us uh, from uh, outside of Europe. Um, this is David Gourlay. I'm in Paris. I'm delighted to uh, host today our fourth webinar um, that actually celebrates uh, a very important milestone for us. So welcome. And uh, let me introduce you to the speakers. Yes, please go ahead. Um, so uh, me, uh, I will just be with you a very uh, short while, just in the first slide, and I'll come back in the Q&A. Uh, the majority of the uh, webinar will be managed by Antoine, who is our CEO, uh, Richard, uh, our product manager, uh, taking care of uh, a range of our product capabilities, and, uh, and Queenie, uh, our chief marketing and chief commercial officer. So with that, uh, let's dive into our uh, first important slide, which is our anniversary. So uh, happy birthday uh, to Hi, happy birthday to Hivers. Happy birthday uh, to every member uh, of the team who has made this dream possible for us. Um, I wanted to share with you in the next slide uh, what we've accomplished um, in this just uh, 365 days. It's been a productive year. It's been a lot of effort. Um, and I want to summarize it across six key points. Um, I would like to start with the team. Uh, you know, with that, obviously, uh, the rest of the crew, uh, there will be no hive. And this formidable crew, uh, of uh, people, uh, 37 to be more exact, come from seven countries and uh, they've already produced four patents and certainly with more to come, um, which enabled us to establish our global operations, uh, the global footprint for very early on a startup like Hive is quite a challenge. So we are present in Cannes, France, Geneva, Switzerland, Hong Kong, China, and Dubai, UAE. We've uh, worked diligently uh, to establish strong partnerships. I'm very pleased to report that uh, we have partnership with, uh, partnered with the uh, Hong Kong government uh, entity called Cyberport. Um, this is actually where Queenie is based and, um, and me also time to time. Um, and also with INRIA, which is a national institute for computer science um, in France, renowned uh, and, and a very important uh, team of 3,000 people with whom we are working um, on all the technology initiatives um, that Hive has embarked on, which enabled us uh, to release uh, Hive Disk, our first product back in October. We've already done 15 releases. Can you imagine that? It's, it's incredible how productive the team has been. Um, we've produced Hive Disk for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, for Android and iPhone. And we are going to have uh, the delightness uh, of Richard to show us how these products work uh, live very soon. Well, uh, what does it mean in terms of adoption? I think these numbers are, are quite interesting to, uh, to share our story. Um, close to 1,000 downloads uh, since uh, this first release back in October last year. Over 50 countries in which uh, people have downloaded are and are participating in HiveNet. And then Antoine will give us a little bit of explanation of how HiveNet works. Those people have made over 25,000 uploads of basically their files, and they have contributed to HiveNet 138,000 gigabytes um, with only 93 support tickets. So uh, this is certainly a hell of an accomplishment, uh, and I couldn't be more proud and more grateful for the team. And to take us forward, I'm gonna leave the floor to Antoine, who's gonna take us on the agenda and the rest of the webinar, I'll uh, get back to you at the end uh, with Quine. Antoine, to you. Thank you, David. Uh, this year has uh, definitely been an amazing journey. You know, very proud of uh, what we all accomplished and, uh, and to be part of this team. And we're always excited to present uh, what we've been working on and what's coming. So. Uh, for those who haven't attended our first webinars, I'll start uh, with a quick introduction on Hive. Uh, and Richard will then drive us through some of the recent developments on Hive Disk, more particularly the uh, native Windows integration and uh, the new mobile versions. And then Queenie will uh, talk about our commercial launch, which is coming soon. And then we'll uh, finish with a Q&A. So let's start with a quick introduction to Hive. Hive is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer cloud federating the unused resources in our computers. You probably all have parts of your disks that is not used today. We estimate that approximately half of these resources are available. 
And by pooling these resources together, we are building a, a sort of virtual data center and we will leverage all these resources to offer cloud and storage compute services. Uh, I'll start by describing what is HiveNet. We call our federated cloud infrastructure HiveNet. So with our users, and we call our users Hivers, we, are, we want to build an alternative cloud built by the community for the community. We definitely believe there is a need for an alternative model. Today, the cloud solutions are concentrated in the hands of a few uh, large players, and this leads to a number of issues. You know, one I'll talk about when we talk about HiveDisk, which is privacy, of course, uh, due to the fact that uh, the data you store in, in, in these big players are not really stored in a private fashion. But when it comes to the infrastructure, this big concentration uh, in big data centers leads to environmental issues. And we want to build an alternative that is environmental friendly. We want, you, we want to give you an opportunity to recycle your wasted, unused hardware, and we are gonna use your computer's idle time. We also want that to be something that is meant for everybody, something that is easy to use. We don't want to have complex things to set up. The only thing you need to do is select how much you wanna share. That's it. You are part of the HiveNet community. We want it to be very flexible. Don't change your habits. We are not asking you to keep your computer 24 seven on. We will use the capacity when it's on. So flexibility is also one of the key thing we want to provide with HiveNet. We want it to be affordable. As you, can, as you contribute, you can offset your cloud costs and you can even earn. You don't need to be a professional miner. You know, as I was saying, we want that to be affordable by everybody, easy to use. So even a small contribution will suffice. We will use whatever is available. And we want this to be meaningful. We want all of you to contribute to help us build a better cloud. So as you can see here on HiveNet, we are already, as David mentioned, present in more than 50 countries. We are also contributing with what we call our own helper nodes. These are just standard nodes also in the peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, we are trying to enhance you know, the, the performance by providing better quality, but it's completely decentralized solutions. Based on this infrastructure, we will build a number of applications on HiveNet. Some are for storage, which is the case of HiveDisk, HiveShare, and HiveVault. And coming next year, some will be for compute, Hive Compute. Well, we will share our compute resources. Let's talk about HiveDisk. In the past month, you know, we've worked hard on HiveDisk to provide our first application on HiveNet. Uh, and as David was saying, you know, we've already shipped 15 releases. With HiveDisk, you can securely and privately store your files. And only you can access these. Hive does not store your files. You know, we don't have a data center in which we actually store your data. So what actually happens is your file is broken up into many small pieces, broken down and spread and distributed over the entire HiveNet. And all these small pieces are encrypted so that you and only you can access the data. HiveDisk is also affordable because it's running on our community cloud. And the more you contribute, the more you can offset your cloud costs. And again, note that you don't need to contribute these resources 24 seven. We just use these resources when you make them available. So what we want with both HiveNet and our solution HiveDisk is to provide a solution that is private, secure, sustainable, and affordable. I won't go into further details on HiveDisk because I will now leave the floor to Richard who will drive us through some of the new features of HiveDisk and demo these. So Richard, the floor is yours. Great, thanks Antoine. Hi everyone, uh, as Antoine said, my name is Richard Warren. I'm based in London uh, and I'm a product manager here at Hive. I'm actually pretty new to the company, uh, having only started in April of this year. I actually joined Hive to help build something that actually I want myself. I've been using various cloud products to protect my personal data and share photos and important documents with friends and family. But the services I've used up until now have been selected out of convenience and the lack of viable alternatives that align with my own values of integrity and looking out for our precious planet. So 
with Hive, I'm very excited that there will be a viable alternative that meets those values, which is what I'm going to show you now. So to start with, uh, we've been working on Windows integration to provide a more streamlined user experience when using HiveDisk and interacting with HiveNet. Our focus was on making it super easy to store your files in HiveDisk, whether that is synchronizing files to ensure you always have access to your critical data or gaining more space by using HiveDisk as additional storage. So here we have a Windows machine and we've installed uh, HiveDisk on this machine. And in the taskbar, we have the HiveDisk app where I can see details of the status, activity, and other settings related to HiveDisk, uh, which we will see more of in a few minutes. In our previous version, you could manage your files through our own file browser. However, there is now a much more accessible way to access and interact with the HiveDisk. So now if I open Windows Explorer, I can see Hive Disk as a drive. Here I can see some files that have already been uploaded and they have a tick next to them uh, to indicate that they've successfully synchronized and are backed up on my Hive Disk. For each file, I can choose to either keep it always on the device to ensure I have it available when I'm offline or I can select a free up space, which will remove the local copy and ensure I have it available online. To demonstrate this, I'll disconnect this machine from the internet. And as a result, uh, I won't be able to download the file because I've made it only available on the Hive Disk Online, but I can queue it up to download later. So when I connect, uh, it will be able to bring that down. So other files are available. I can open this file here, which has already been synchronized locally. So once I reconnect to the internet, my favorite picture of the rabbit with a pancake on his head will resynchronize automatically. So I can also use hard disk just as a normal drive. So for example, I can copy this documents folder and upload it hard disk. I can see a status update showing that it's synchronizing and being uploaded. And all of this seamlessly handled in the background. I can also see more details about the upload action here. Remember, the files have been broken into shards, encrypted, and distributed among the nodes of the HiveNet. So speaking of nodes, we now have a, uh, a map showing the nodes that I'm connected to. In the settings, I can see an interactive map of all these nodes, including my own node, with my ID, my general location, and how much I'm contributing to the network. If I click on another node, I can see various information about the latency and how I'm connected to that particular node. And it's really cool to see exactly how I'm participating and connecting to the other peers within the HiveNet, not a data center in Stack. All of my files have now synchronized. And if I go to my photos, I can see that the photograph is now available locally. It's highlighted, indicating that it's available. So now, uh, we will look at other ways to access hard disk. So we'll move over to our first mobile. And so here we are on Android and we'll start by opening the app that we've already installed from the Google Play Store. I'm logging in with the same credentials I used for the Windows demo. I'm asked for the all important passphrase to gain access to my hard disk. Get through to that. And then once I'm logged in, we'll see those same files we saw within the Windows Explorer. There we go. And we can see and navigate around the folders, select files to download to the phone. And this makes the files available, available to us even when we don't have an internet connection, something I'm sure we've all experienced sometime, especially when traveling. So with a file downloaded, we can view certain files like photos, for others, depending on what apps we have installed, we can open them. And then we're just downloading the document and we can open that. Okay, and now moving over to uh, our other mobile app. So we've also got an app for iOS. So we have the same experience we saw in Android. So this gives me access to my files on the device that I use. 
So with this initial release of Hive Disk for mobile, uploading files requires the desktop app on Windows or Mac OS. However, as you'll soon find out, this limitation will not be there for long. But for now, my files uh, are here with my files, and I can browse and download and share files with other apps on my phone. So we've seen how we uh, are progressively adding the key features to make Hive Disk the tool to securely store and access your files across desktop and mobile in cloud storage done the right way. So utilizing unused capacity on other Hive's machines without depending on power hungry data centers. So here we're in early access right now, but with every release, we get closer to the cloud storage that I would select for myself. We're already dog fooding the next features, which mean I can start to store and share my files with friends and family using Hive Disk. And I can't wait for you to try it yourselves. So in the coming weeks, we will see Mac OS integration offering the same accessibility we just saw in Windows. With mobile, we will soon be able to create folders and upload documents and photos to your Hive Disk from your device wherever you are. And last but not least, we'll be bringing secure sending of files utilizing the power of the HiveNet, providing simple but highly available and performance sending of files directly from your Hive Disk. And this is still only the start, so there will be more exciting things to come. So that covers what we're doing with the Hive Disk product. Uh, let's now talk about how we go to market. And there's no better person to walk us through that than Queenie. Thank you very much, Richard. Hello, everyone. My name is Queenie, and I'm the CMO and CCO for Hive. I am based in Hong Kong, and uh, but today I'm actually in Paris with the team. So, um, so like Richard, you know, I'm also a very big uh, user of cloud storage because I'm a mother of three young children. I love traveling and I love performing arts. So you could imagine the amount of photos, videos that exist on all my devices are really, really large number. And uh, I'm constantly personally searching for a good solution for the family and for myself, and also for all the co-working um, uh, projects that I'm in. Um, so I'm very, very happy and excited to join the Hive team. And together, we, hopefully we can build a very affordable, easy to use alternative cloud solution for the community and good for the environment that we will all be able to access to very soon. So as the team mentioned, um, today I'm going to walk you through our initial go-to-market strategy for Hive Disk, um, which is HiveNet's, uh, Hive's first application um, on the HiveNet for cloud storage. I will first start with the positioning of Hive Disk. As you can see on this um, screen, you know, we have uh, provided a very simple illustration on uh, what's happening in the market. You see on the left-hand side, is the incumbents um, that, you know, the solutions that you all probably are very familiar with. And then on the right-hand side are all the new alternative players. On top, we represent the mass market usage. And on the bottom is more for specialized niche markets. You can see that we have uh, decided to position Hive at the top right-hand corner. And um, the way we differentiate ourselves is uh, from the other incumbents in three ways. The first um, groups of uh, incumbents that I would say, which are on the top left-hand side uh, ones, they are usually centralized storage uh, providers. Some of the providers also provide tailored solutions to drive the price up and also provide additional um, support like e-signature, approval process, et cetera. And they're usually uh, more expensive than what you would pay for to instead of buying a hard disk in, at home to provide more resilience and also access across devices. Comparing to these incumbents, we hope to, through high, we'll provide a sustainable, secure, and um, sovereignty sensitive alternative, and also at a much lower cost. The second group of players in the market focus a lot on privacy and sovereignty, and also security. They usually uh, base the trust on, for example, specific uh, data centers location, and also not being based in the US, like all the incumbents that you could see. And um, they are usually centralized and they're usually pricey and they are usually much smaller in scale. And compared to them, Hive plans to offer a post-quantum security level at a much lower cost, thanks to our native peer-to-peer -peer network system. And the third type of um, providers that exist in the market today, utilizing um, the marketplace to buy and sell storage using blockchain and cryptocurrency incentive tokens. 
These are usually for the more niche and more, uh, I would say, professional players like the coin miners. And, uh, and we are using similar decentralized or distributed system. However, we provide a very user-friendly a very performant and also convenient solution to you. If you want more, 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 want more information, you can check out our social media and also our website as well. We'll have more explanation. As for our target audience, we have, um, as we said, that we have been uh, launching our beta versions uh, in the market. And we have discovered that our early adopters are usually three groups of audience. The first ones, like all new technology products, will be the technology enthusiasts and also the geeks, we call them. And some of them, you know, they are anti-GAFA, you know, and they are really, really focused on privacy and also the green element. So we tend to help them to keep their data private away from the big techs. And also they really care about the privacy policies. So as opposed to some people, you know, prefer using Signal rather than WhatsApp for that particular reason. And there's an ideology about, you know, the belief on decentralized, uh, decentralized system is the right solution for all in the future. And of course, in the crypto market, it's also very important to secure your cryptocurrencies. The next type of users that we have realized are liking hype are the NAS users. So currently in the market, there's no easy and good solution to so-called cloudify your NAS. So how do you say keep your NAS safe and also secure your NAS data against theft, fire, hardware failure, ransomware, and also making sure it's geographically spread at a low cost. So we believe Cloud Hive will be a very good solution for this group of people. And we think this market is actually going to grow into a very big trend. Last but not least are the new generation, the millennials and also the Gen Z who are planet cautious, who are price conscious, and they do care about being green and being having a fun experience on using the product. So we will be able to, and we would uh, aspire ourselves to be able to help them to extend and share the, their device's capacity using Hive securely and also at a low cost or at a free price, you know, and also with a great user experience. So we also help them because of these special, um, special construct that we have will help them to reduce waste by recycling and use storage capacity of the computers and perhaps also allow them to win a few dollars here and there um, by just sharing their capacity. So we'll continue to work on the market and also as we have more commercial plans available for all, then we'll see how that trend goes. But if you are one of these groups and you are not on Hive yet, I strongly encourage you to be part of us and give us more feedback. Next, I would like to talk about our timeline of go-to-market. So as mentioned, you know, we are preparing for a commercial launch in the summer. And of course, before we do that, we have to do a lot of preparation work. So in Q2, we've been working hand-in-hand -hand with product and engineering team, as well as our management team to define the MMP, the minimal marketable product, as well as all the business readiness projects. So we will have the product ready on Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and Linux by summer. And also we'll optimize our high net algorithm to cater to all these different nodes growth. And we will also have all the marketing engines in place, including uh, augmented website, our social media plans, our payment systems, and also all the campaigns that are ready. And of course, you know, very importantly, we have to define a commercial models that is sustainable and affordable for everyone. And Q3, you know, it will be a very exciting time for us, all of us in Hive, especially my team, because we will be officially allowing all the users to buy storage on Hive Disk and be rewarded for their share capacity. And we will also develop a supplier loyalty program to reward supporters that will be contributing a large amount of storage to HiveNet to make us a better place. And, uh, and the reward program will be robust and we are fine tuning the details. And this is why we would like to go to a market as early as possible to get your feedback. Next, we would like to move on to share our pricing philosophy. So the exact numbers are, are to be reviewed soon, but here's our philosophy in general. 
First, we do plan to offer a freemium plan and also flexible model. So what that means is that you will be able to try out Hive Disk at a completely free cost, and you can test out different features and also get a sense on what that means by storing data in a distributed manner rather than a centralized manner. And you'll enjoy the resiliency there as well. And the rest of the plans, we plan to make it space-based instead of feature-based, meaning no matter which plan you join, you will enjoy all the features, security protection, and also customer support. And then you will be also obviously to gain the, to adhere to our very decentralized and distributed philosophy, we will able to allow you to access your storage from unlimited devices and all kinds of devices as we support. And you'll be able to try a new commercial model, which is you can actually offset payment of your cloud storage on Hive by sharing your hard disk capacity to HiveNet and in a very easy manner. And as I mentioned, we are going to have rewards for large contributors and, uh, and it will be very easy to install as well compared to what's happening in the market, which are very stringent entry requirements. So to recap, we have three plans. We have the freemium model where you will get free Hive disk storage. Second model, you can also have it free or partially free by contributing your unused hard disk. And third, just like you show, if you prefer more paying your Hive disk with actual money or stable coins, you'll be able to do so as well. And we can't wait to share with you the exact numbers as we launch. And we are aiming to go to be the most affordable version in the market. So stay tuned and we'll give more details later. Finally, I would like to conclude that and remind everyone that you know, we are here to build the right cloud together. And that means that you know, as we launch the commercial in the summer, we would love to get your support by either using the product or trying the new model, the offsetting model, or you know, give us a little bit money you know, or coins to, to buy your storage and try it out. We'll make sure the flexible plans will satisfy your needs and if not, we'll be very happy to hear your feedback so we can adjust accordingly. And, you know, we also want to make sure we build a community or membership club, you know, so to speak, of the Hiver supporters. And here, by contributing to the HiveNet, you will get rewards and also recognition along the way. Remember, Hive Disk is actually meant to build for everyone. So this is an alternative to protect our privacy, our environment, and also our wallet. So if you haven't tried something like that before, I strongly encourage you to try. If you're already a Web3 or a decentralized product user, we would love to get your expertise and text feedback to make us better and for a broader community. Here's a website, uh, here's an email address, hello at hivenet.com that we're very welcome to hear your feedback. And also you can contact us on all social media, which we'll be showing you the access at the end of this presentation. Thank you very much. And I'm going to hand over to Antoine again for our closing as well as the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Queenie. Thank you, Richard. Uh, many things have happened since we launched uh, Hive one year ago. I always find it great you know, to see what was only a vision, a concept, actually become real and uh, you know, us overcoming all these challenges. Uh, as you all can see, the team has worked hard this past year to provide the best possible Hive disk experience, both on desktop and mobile. And uh, there's quite some complex technology running behind the scene uh, and we'll continue improving it. So to provide the always best possible experience. I would also like to thank the numerous Hivers who have brought valuable feedback in the past month. And so continue giving us feedback, whether it's on the product, on the features you want, what you think about the commercial model, if you have issues using the product. Uh, we strongly believe that with you, our community of Hivers, we are building an alternative cloud model and that such decentralized and sustainable model will be the right model for cloud storage moving forward, if not the norm tomorrow. We are now very excited to open the second page of our journey with our commercial launch next quarter. And we encourage you all to go to our website, hivenet.com, download our Hivedisk app and start uploading files on Hivenet. I will now open the sessions to questions.
So we have a first question, which is, what operations do you support on the Windows native phone integration? Is the experience different from using my local hard drive? So I will uh, let Richard answer these questions. Oh, it's uh, exactly the same. So yeah, you all the actions you can do in Explorer. Uh, so moving files, renaming, uh, even saving directly from an application, uh, just treat it like a normal drive. Uh, and all that magic happens in the background seamlessly. Thank you, Richard. Uh, it is uh, meant to be seamless and used as any, any sort of uh, disk, and it makes the experience very smooth. And I'm always amazed to see, you know, all the magic that happens behind the scene and that being totally seamless. We have a second question. Any plans for a full Linux app on major distributions, Ubuntu, Mint? That's also for you, Richard. Yeah. Uh, so we do have an early build uh, for Linux that will run uh, on most distributions right now. Uh, so we'd certainly be glad if you can try that. That's for contribution only. Um, but we will be looking uh, further for server um, applications in the future. Uh, so do take a look at that if you are using Linux. Uh, and I'm always uh, on any sort of feedback on what you'd look for uh, in a hard disk integration into those platforms. Yeah, and one other thing we can also mention is... Uh... We're looking uh, also at uh, packaging it more specifically for some of the popular NAS out there so that uh, the install for non-Linux uh, users is even smoother. Uh, but, you know, we already have some Linux versions out there for you to use. The third question is, uh, there are too many options out there. How will Hive attract more people and retain its early adopters? Queenie, you want to take that one? Sure. I think uh, that's correct. You know, there are growing more options out there. Um, I think for us, the real um, differentiator here is that we are not um, building Hive uh, on the back of um, just commercial incentives. We definitely are seeing, as uh, all of us uh, in the team have experience, um, working for companies or personally using a lot of cloud storage, and we see how um, expensive to a degree that you, you have to pay to provide certain, to, to have certain service, as well as the environmental uh, carbon footprint that we're creating by using the incumbent centralized uh, systems. So we believe by in, in simply um, recruiting the uh, unused resources from everyone itself, it's already a much greener option. Uh, furthermore, you know, our plan is to work with um, partners as well as uh, working with um, educational institutions as well as a green, uh, the green industry to further enhance that uh, green element um, into our product as well as uh, both on an operation level and also for the contribution um, of our proceeds level. So with that, um, if we are able to enjoy the same amount of um, security or, or privacy, if not more, uh, efficiency as well while doing better for the community and for our future. I think that's a, to me, I think is a, is a no brainer to do a shift. A shift. Um, but of course, there's always a habit change here. So we, um, we are very lucky and helpful that um, we have been getting very good support for our existing um, testers. And, uh, and if they are all able to um, join our referral programs later on um, that we'll have a launch, then um, I think it will be a great way to bring more and more people to the community and the message will be even louder and clearer in the future. Yes, and uh, I think, you know, the, the solutions out there exist and work pretty well, uh, but the concentration and centralization, you know, is being more and more challenged. So we're convinced, you know, the relevance of our solution will grow over time. It will become more and more relevant. So there is a need and, and for alternatives and we're going to be the ones Fulfilling that need. Uh, I have another question. Uh, can I select where my data should be stored at country level or specific computers managed by an organization? It's uh, the question is from Florent Gates. Uh, Richard, localization, I think, is the question, and also related to uh, organization and business features. Yeah, so. Today, the answer is no, but this is definitely something that we're looking at. And we see this as a, as a key element of the HiveNet 
being able to select uh, yeah, the regions, locations, or maybe even and then one of the ideas we're looking at is, is communities of hivers where you can actually grow, you know, be able to create a, a community of, of trusted people that you know um, and then only store data within those areas. So they are things that we're thinking of um, and certainly be a key element of this so you can decide sort of where that data sits so the sovereignty of the data is clear when you're either storing it or sharing it. Perfect. Um, we had a number, we have another question on the uh, operations regarding native file integration. I think we went through that, similar operations. Maybe uh, you could uh, give a few, few differences related to the fact we're able to store online or store uh, offline. There are a few enhancements or a few differences compared to the standard native file integration. Can you give us a few hints there, Richard? Yeah, I suppose it, it, with the nature of, of cloud storage, obviously it's 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 you know, connecting through the internet to the hive net, um, and your connectivity can change. Um, so the way that works, and I think you know, in the demo, maybe I went past it quite quickly, but you can select the status of of those files, so you can choose uh, whether to synchronize them, so they're available locally and within the hive disk, or you can either choose to push them to the hive disk and free up space locally. Um, so there is that choice. So if you're know, running out of space and use Hive Disk to extend your storage on, on that particular device. Um, another key note here is, and, and maybe that's not clear, you can use multiple devices. So you can uh, access this Hive Disk uh, as, a, as a consistent and, and um, reliable way to access your files across those devices. Um, but really the, the functionality when you're using that native integration um, is just like using uh, a normal disk uh, just with that additional level of choosing whether you want to synchronize or you want to free up space locally and just use the the online element of the of the hive disk i hope that answered the question yes thank you um i'll maybe take uh one or two more before we end this uh, session many people have concerns about the security of their data when using cloud storage can you share an example that explains how Hive's model ensures the security of user data. Who wants to take that one? Queenie, you want to try it out? And then maybe Richard, more on the technical front. Sure. So um, for any data that, yeah, it's a very good question, actually. Um, we have been asked um, a number of times. So again, you know, for, for, for the nature of our um, architecture, you know, because all your data uh, we upload it to the Hive um, disk is going to be chopped into many, many different pieces, into different shards, we call them, and then it will be sent to all the, through the algorithm system to many, many different computers around the world. And um, so with that, you know, naturally you have the resiliency and also the reliability because of the geographical distribution and also the anonymity of the, um, of the locations that it will be stored. And I think what's very smart about the uh, Hive algorithm is that um, it doesn't require uh, all these users to be online all the time. So it's smart enough to be able to spread your data uh, while someone is online. And, um, and also the data will never be lost, you know, when someone is offline. As long as we have at the moment 50% of the shots available, then we have a process um, called warm healing that you will heal back the file in one piece. So I think that will be a very critical requirement for the resiliencies, especially compared to the centralized storage. Richard, Richard you want to add something that explains a bit how it works? Yeah, I mean, I suppose... Personally, this is one of the things that thing came to me was that, you know, hang on, my data is being sent to other people's computers. So, you know, is, is that safe? Um, and I think that the answer is really uh, in, in the inherent nature of the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, you, you saw on the demo that I was entering a passphrase. Uh, that passphrase is, is, is one of the key elements to it. So it's something that only you know. Um, so even, even us as Hive, we have no access to that, that passphrase at all. And that passphrase is used to encrypt your data to a very high level. Uh, and we're talking about aiming for what we're calling post-quantum level of encryption. So even if uh, someone could get to that shard, remember that's only a part of your data stored on another node, 
uh, to to be able to remove that encryption. And when we say um, post quantum, it's like if if quantum computers could actually do what they promise. Uh, and could do all these millions of calculations in seconds, even then it still wouldn't be able to crack within a reasonable time frame. And when I say a reasonable time frame, I'm talking sort of thousands of years. So really it's uh, it's a really, really safe way of, of doing this, that the data is, is just encrypted. And then even if you did un unencrypt that, that one shard, you would only have a tiny part of the data. Uh, and so it would probably be meaningless. Um, so again, just inherently, it's it's like super secure just in the way that it's being stored. So I must admit, you know, once I learned that, it's like I'm all in. You know, it's, it's and and, and it's one great. thing I would add here is uh, it's been designed to work with uh, malicious nodes. So we don't expect that the nodes are not trying to do a few tricks there and there. Exactly like you have in the Bitcoin community, it's meant to work uh, with nodes that we don't need to trust. Uh, so it's it's done by design. I will. Um, Finish our Q&A session with uh, a question for David, uh, which is, uh, where do you see Hive in five years from now? And what's the end goal of the company? And I'll let you close, close this session. Thank you, Antoine. And thanks to uh, all the participants for all these uh, wonderful questions. Um, you know, I don't have a crystal ball <laughs> uh, to, uh, to give you what the future holds. But uh, the vision of Hive is to provide unprecedented computing capability to the world. Um, and I mean unprecedented in, in, um, in a number of dimensions. And number one is in terms of raw power. And when you think that at any given day, there is over 4 billion devices that are online and connected to the internet in comparison to about 50 million of so servers in data centers. And, um, and that massive asymmetry um, is actually uh, dramatically reducing the capacity available for very large and complex uh, computing and storage tasks. And, uh, and I believe that by unleashing, if you could just do like 1% of this 4 billion in five years, and then probably it's going to be much bigger than that, we will be already much larger than what is ever going to be available in data centers around the world. And you know, can you imagine what you can do with that? You know, I think that's that's kind of you know one of my dreams, providing that raw capacity, but doing it again in, in an unprecedented way, in a responsible way. And for me, the responsibility around the infrastructure providers is to provide a, a neutral uh, platform, and and that neutrality is 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 extremely important, both in terms of governance and sovereignty, and as well as in terms of what we leave behind as we build this. You know, I mean, think about the energy consumption of all these large data centers, even though they are trying to go as green as possible, you know, they are going to exceed the worldwide airline industry energy consumption in the next five years. And, uh, and this is by adding redundant computing capacity versus that's already available today. And I think the responsibility of infrastructure providers like Hive is to you know, recognize this uh, absurdity of, and the paradox of these cloud providers and then create an alternative in which our data is never used in a way that is against our consent. And it is never leaving more footprint than our own energy consumption that kind of, for me, is another unprecedented dimension. So hopefully, uh, with the help of the community, with the help of the Hivers, with the help of the, obviously the team of, uh, of Hive, uh, we will achieve that. And, and if we do that, oh my God, can you imagine what we're going to be able to unleash? So that, for me, is the future, and I like to do it all together. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. And don't forget to go on hivenet.com and try our application.